An important thing to know when you're doing script lettering is where the letters should be thick and where the letters should be thin. The reasoning for this comes from traditional lettering where you'd be using like a, a brush or like a quill pen. It's based on the way you would write the letters out. On an upstroke, as you're pulling up, the line would be thin, and then on a downstroke, the line would get thick as it sort of pushes the... I have this lettering treatment that I did for a friend's podcast called Try Not To Curse. So you'll see here, I have the word curse in just one line weight. I want to fatten this up a little bit, give it a little more emphasis, but I don't wanna make it like universally bold. So what I'm gonna do is use this as like a structure, as sort of like letter bones, and I'm gonna go in and add some letter meat to the outside. Letter meat is also a, a very traditional hand lettering term that like the fine masters use. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna come in and like add some thickness in the areas where a downstroke would be. If we're looking at the C here, you would draw the C coming up like this and then you pull down here, getting this, this part nice and chunky. And then I would go ahead and just sort of like taper it as the stroke would be going up. This is where you can add some style and variety like you could have it be a very dramatic change, or you could have it be a subtle change. So on the U here, I'm going to come down, make that nice and fat, and then thin it out as it's going up. And then I would just go in and do it for all the other letters. All right, so here's my curse lettering added in the letter beef. It's got a little more weight to it, a little more presence on the page, a little more balance with the other words here. If you look and like pay attention to where the thicks and thins are, you'll see that it's not perfectly accurate. This part of the R coming down, technically that would probably be like the thickest part because it's so vertical, but you know, I'm thinning that out and I'm letting that sort of emphasize the areas that make the letter unique and like what makes it different. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris Piasek. I've been a professional illustrator for the past 12 years. I've worked with clients like Google, Adidas, Cartoon Network, and tons more. Throughout my career, lettering has always played a prominent role in the kind of work that I do. As I started putting together this list of five things, I ended up having a bunch of other ideas that I felt like they should also be in this video. So stick around to the end for a couple bonus tips. The kind of lettering that I do and the kind of lettering that I'm gonna talk about is very much based in illustration. It's very much illustrative lettering. It's lettering that's meant to like invoke a mood or a feeling or a style or some sort of vibe. It is not this very precise craft of lettering that's been passed down from generation to generation. I point this out because it took me a while to sort of come to this realization within my own work and to sort of almost accept that kind of thing. The reason for this is pretty early on into my career as an illustrator, when I was doing lots of hand lettering, I guess I still am doing lots of hand lettering, but even more so early on, I got asked to do a hand lettering workshop for some, I think it was like an art director's club. And I remember they posted some promo thing online and this very prominent type designer saw the post and then responded saying, oh, I guess it's amateur hour over there now. And this just really sort of crushed me and deflated me. Um, I think especially because in my previous career I was a graphic designer before I transitioned into illustration. And so I just had this like revere, revere, reverence for like this, you know, the fine art of type design. And so seeing this, I don't know, it sort of crushed me. And then I had to go on and do the event and act like I was like totally fine and like confident in presenting, even though the whole time I was like, everyone thinks I'm a hack. I'm the worst person at doing this. I can't believe I have to do this event. But eventually I came to realize that like, hey, I'm not trying to do that precise lettering that this guy is talking about. I don't know what point I was getting at. I think it was just the fact that I'm going to talk about these specific rules. But another important thing to remember is that if you're doing this kind of lettering, you should be having fun. and. Another tip is to uh, listen to the rules and then break the rules. So script lettering can be a little bit more difficult to read than just like straight block letters. So you want to pay attention to the letter forms and like what makes each letter unique so that if you're getting a little loose, shifting baselines, making some drippy type or fluffy type, 
You just want to make sure that you are emphasizing what makes the letter unique and not hiding that so it can make the letters harder to, harder to read. So a good example of this would be an H and a K. So these are very similar, but the K has got this little dent coming in there. When we're just drawing these letters normal like this, it's pretty easy to see. But let's say we were getting loose and we were doing some like wiggly, trippy letters and like your K ended up looking like that because you were doing like a little wiggle with your line. Now that looks pretty H-like. So for me, if I was doing this sort of wiggly line situation like this, I would really make it a point to emphasize that indent to make it very clear that this was a K. So just like a clear crease in that line. Another tricky one is the S. So traditional S, it's like that. And, you know, when things are getting kind of busy, it can get a little bit hard to read. So sometimes I'll exaggerate the width so that I can, like, emphasize that S shape. And then there's the R. So I guess depending on how you're drawing things, it could be close to, like, an N. So what I like to do is just emphasize that sort of hard, I don't know, almost like a crease, that angle right here. To make sure it doesn't read like an N. And I try to just make sure my ends are rounded out. So the next tip is to use guides to help make sure that your letter angles match each other. This will make it look a little bit cleaner and more consistent. And again, there are times when you might want to not do this. So if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see my everything lettering. That doesn't have standard angles. Like these angles kind of rotate and wiggle a little bit. And you know, it's okay. We're doing whatever we want here. There's no rules, but sometimes you may want type that looks a little bit tighter. And in those cases, guides are super helpful. So that's what I want to do for this other people type. So what I'm going to do is turn down the opacity on my sketch, make a new layer. I'm going to come in here and just grab a, like a hard round, simple brush that doesn't have any tape or anything to it. Then I'll get like a blue color. And what I'll do here is just draw a line and hold it to snap to sort of make that baseline for the letters. And then I'll duplicate that line and pull it up like that to get the X height, which is the height of the main part of the letter. And now we can merge those two together and duplicate that. And then we can use it for the other words so we can match those angles. And as you can see from my rough sketch, like it's close, but you know, there's some areas where it's like this is could come down lower and like this is up pretty high. So this would be a good way to tighten things up. So in addition to the horizontal baselines, having some vertical ones is really helpful as well. So I'll just make like a couple of these based around some of like the main vertical letters like the T. We'll duplicate it and drag it over for the H. Then maybe we'll do another one for the P. And then maybe one more for the L at the end. Let me merge those down. So now I'll have that grid all on its own layer. Grab black, switch over to the brush that I was drawing the rest of this with, which is the Retro Supply Co. Classic Anchor. In addition to making these guides, I'll actually make the start of one of my letters and then duplicate it to sort of spread it out to keep it consistent in terms of weight and width, but also save me a little bit of time. So what I'll do here is duplicate this and then I'll go ahead and drag it over for the H. I can drag it over for that part of the H. Obviously, we're going to have to tweak these a little bit as we go, but this will be a good starting point. Okay, so now that I've got these in here, I can go in and just finish up the rest of what I need for the letter. So on the L, you'll see that we're going to have to erase some of that top, but again, no big deal. And then we can just do our modifier thing to turn this into an eraser and just taper that down a little bit. There, so now we have all the letters and you can see that they have consistent 
matching angles and everything's nice and tight. I can go ahead and turn off the grid and good to go. So in the last one, I showed you how to make lettering using perfect baselines. In this one, I'm gonna tell you to make wonky baselines. <laughs> Seriously though, one thing you can try is doing some curved baselines to let that dictate the shape of your of your words and this can have a really fun effect with script lettering so to do this i'm just going to go ahead and make a squiggly little line then you could take things up another notch by having the that shape sort of taper down like that so you get like a, a wider area and then a thinner area and now we can use this as like a framework to fit our letters to. So let's say we want to put the word awesome in this awesome shape that we made. One thing you might find helpful is to not go straight into script. So you could just kind of just block it in with letters like this. And this is helpful to sort of figure out the spacing and like the size of the letters. So what we could do now is turn that down and then use that as like another guide. So now we can just go in and try to do the the script using that reference. So if we go in and add some letter beef, again, it's a technical term, you'll see it maybe start to come to shape a little bit. Awesome! This could also be a fun way to like wrap lettering around an object. So let's say maybe you had like a, a rad little skull over here just hanging out. And let's say you wanted to put some type around it. We could draw a path like that, give it a little more arc. Maybe like that. So we're just making this shape that seems to like flow with the object. So I think that's pretty good. So now if I make a new layer, we can come in here and we can write so cool because this skull is so cool. Block that in, block letters, and then come in and do some script. This also leads me to like a bonus tip. So this tip is to just uh, do whatever you want. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you'll see this S is not very uh, much like a capital S in cursive. Capital S in cursive is, you know, some of this action. I don't want to draw that. Have you ever seen a script I? Like an uppercase I? That's what it looks like. I, that's disgusting. I, I don't even know if I remember how to draw a G, but it's something ridiculous like this. I don't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to draw my G's like that. I'll maybe do like a, a big lowercase G like this, or, you know, I, I don't even know if I've done this, but maybe I would. I'll just like make it like this and just add a little, little squiggle and we'll call that great. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'd do that. Depends on the situation. Basically, I'll just add squiggles to whatever and call it that letter. I don't give a hoot and heck. I'm just gonna come in and do the cool lettering. Sometimes I'll just draw the shape with like the width that I want and just taper it that way and then fill it in as opposed to like just sort of using the pressure sensitivity. And then we got like a cool little lockup thing. So cool. So my next tip is to try to make some sort of cool combinations between your words within your script lettering through made up ligatures. These are not really lig ligatures, but like combining different letters and words so that they intertwine and make a fun little combination. So for example, we've got this stay weird lettering. You may recognize the stay weird lettering from the sign that's in my office that you may have seen in uh, another one of my videos. Hey, have you seen any of my other videos? Let me know in the comments. Let me know anything in the comments. Comments are super good for my engagement and the growth of this channel, and that's what I'm trying to do. So uh, let, let me know if you've seen my videos. So if you see here, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. Add some combinations, and now we've got like a thing. It's like a little logo type situation. So if we turn down the opacity on this one, and then turn back on the normal one, you can see basically just found places where they could sort of connect. So like you see the S coming up and it's like, oh, maybe we just curve that around and come down. So let's sort of walk through this process with these uh, biggie lyrics. I guess this is only a small part of the lyrics. We're gonna do this 
combination because there's lots of possibilities here. As you can see, I started out just like writing it and like sort of spacing it out and sh figuring out like, oh, I think I like this angle and this like size of the letters, like the can be smaller, but the sky and limit and they're just sort of like offsetting each other. So the next step for me would be to make like a script version based on that sort of quick lockup. I mean, sometimes I'll start with the script thing and just go directly to this. But after that, I'll go back to one of the earlier tips and I'll make some guides to see if I can tighten this up and make sure it doesn't get a little too wonky. Here's some guides that I made for this. I'll kind of go in and tighten this up a little bit and get it all sort of worked out a little bit. Grab my classic anchor, make sure my smoothing is jacked up to 100 so I can get nice, long, smooth lines. I guess that's another tip if you don't know about it. You will notice when you're drawing with it, there's a little bit of a lag, but it does that to help you draw smoother lines. So if you're ever drawing with something and you think that there's a lag, almost never at the app. I've actually never had fresco lag. It's probably just your smoothing. So if you are bothered by that, you can just make sure your smoothing's all the way down and then there's like nothing, there's no, it's very direct. But when you're doing script, smoothing is your friend. So now I can just sort of follow these guidelines to help make sure that everything lines up okay. And you can see the S is like a little too high here and that's why this grid is helpful. I'm already seeing the possibility of like the Y and the L here. All right, so I've got this lettering redrawn using these guides and at this point, I'm gonna just sort of look for combinations and try to just build around on this. So one thing I'm thinking is the counter this like tail of the Y is like a little crammed in here. And then we got this little the there, the there, the there. So like, what if we made a little house for the the to live in inside that part of the Y? It sounds crazy, but crazier things have happened. So we could like, boom. And then watch this coming through, making the L. Look at that shape. It's already so much more fun. And now we can just put that in there. Pretty cool. That's fun. I'm still like using those guides, but just playing with scale a little bit. So although I like this, now that extra space there is like a little odd. This process for making these combinations is a lot of just like sort of adjusting and moving things around. It feels almost like solving a puzzle. And I'm just sort of like finding ways to like get that combination to work naturally in like a flowy, cohesive way. And it, it you know, sometimes takes lots and lots of iterations, just like fine tuning and like tweaking angles and sizes. And you know, sometimes it can go too far. What you want to do is like try to I don't know, for me, like I try to push it as far as I can without making it too like hard to read or just like too, too wacky. So sometimes I'll go too far and then dial it back a little bit. When you're doing this kind of thing, one thing that you want to focus on is that when you are closing up spaces, be conscious of the fact that you're like making a framework around something. So if it's just like empty space that's not serving a purpose or like emphasizing something or like giving some breathing room, it's just gonna make it a, a weird focal point. And if there's nothing there, it's just drawing your eye to nothing that can be distracting. And you wanna guide people's eyes intentionally. So like clearly this is a mess right now, but like we're getting somewhere. We can fine tune this. Listen, maybe some of you are on to me, but I've already done this lettering treatment before. I just thought it would be a perfect example to demo and walk through the process on. So instead of pretending like I'm figuring this all out for the first time, let's just look at the finished product. That said, this is exactly the process I went through for doing it. All right, so this is the final lettering. As you can see, just flows together nicely. The text wraps around that baseline. I ended up changing that a little bit to follow this line. So again, Breaking rules. I don't care about the rules. So we got this squiggle coming down, coming around, dot in the eye. I liked using the tail of the Y as like the crossbar of the T, but I felt like it was a little too hard to read on its own. So what I did was just erased that a little bit to separate it, but it still flows together in a nice way. 
this is the final result. I feel like it is a nice, like, cohesive little fun lockup, and these kind of things are super fun to do. You should try some out. Is there anything else here? Maybe the rest of the lyrics? Alright, you ready for a bonus tip? If you were doing your lettering in Adobe Fresco and you were using the vector brushes, the vector trimming makes it so easy to get nice, crisp, tight corners. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's draw a script R. So I'm going to hold and snap that line. Hold and snap that line. Just make a nice, chunky, fatty script R. So what I'm doing is just drawing through, just drawing through the shapes. So with the vector trimming, we just come in here, double tap our modifier, and then we just cross out these things that we don't want. Look at that. Super easy and super fun. So what do you think? Are you excited to go do some script lettering? What about some uh, drippy or fluffy letters? Drippy letters pair very well with script. Just a nice gooey combination where you can do those word combinations where things are stretchy, drippy, slimy. Just, just a lot of fun. If you are, I got a whole video about drawing drippy letters and fluffy letters, if you want to do fluffy letters. Fluffy letters aren't necessarily the best for script, but hey, do a combination. Pair some fluffy letters with some script letters. Just draw some letters. All right, good talk. <laughs>